go. I, that, major turn on watching my husband be so sexy out in that ring. I don't know how I feel about Becca and Austin. I think they've been playing up to the cameras so long and been hiding whatever problems they've had that I, it's difficult for me to sort of catch up to where they are. And then Michael, oh my God, it's nice to see him doing something that sort of turns his wife on. But hey, it is what it is. Hey there, thanks for stopping by. It's your girl Valerie. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, turn on the notification bell for when I upload new videos and definitely leave a comment. In this episode, I'll be reviewing Married at First Sight, season 17, episode 18. I'm a bit confused. I'm going to need someone to unpack this because um, Chloe and Michael come back from the retreat and Chloe mentions that she wants to go back home and be with her animals and take some time out because she's an introvert and she needs her alone time. And I didn't know that Mavs allowed this. I thought once they started filming, they had to stay in the accommodations provided until the, the decision day. And poor Michael, he was talking about going to take one of his animals, bring it back, and then take the rest the following day. So I think he's sort of like, what the hell happened? I don't understand. And for me, this is a problem. This is a problem. What's going to happen when they, if they say yes on decision day? Will she be asking Michael for a time out? That doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't make sense. And Michael is right to be worried that is it because she just doesn't want to spend time with me or is there something else that I'm missing? And yeah, he is right to feel some type of way because it doesn't make sense that suddenly she wants to go home and spend some time with her animals. It's one thing if she was saying I'm going to spend a couple of hours, but for her to say I'm going for a couple of days, hmm, red flag, if not pink flag. I'm starting to side eye Brennan because to me it now seems like he's now d looking after Emily so that he can say, you know, look, I'm a good guy. I did stand by her when she was going through a difficult time because you have him and Emily sort of Emily sitting there with, you know, an ice pack. I think she's got swelling around her eye and her face. And so he's sort of saying, look at her. She's doing great. We're doing great. And it's like, mm, this is more for the gram. It's not for someone who cares. It's not coming across that way. Um, and then you have Becca in her attic. She's crying. Apparently, Austin was up upset her or he was upset with her and said some things that really upset her. So they requested that they sit down with the experts, I think, before they continued filming. And so because I think the producers are struggling with people just not cooperating like they used to do in earlier seasons. I think this is why they brought the A-team. They brought Pastor Carl and Dr. Pepper together. And they were actually shocked because before the experts arrived, you had Austin think, oh, can I lean on you? Can I do this? And Becca was setting boundaries and was like, nah, nah, because you can't be loving and all. And yet you are not willing to be intimate with me. And well, that's the impression that I got. So Pastor Carl, Dr. Pepper arrived. They sat down with them and their arguments didn't make sense. It seemed like every time the experts addressed something, Becca would come back with something else. Every time they addressed something, Becca would come back with something else. And so it was interesting to see, you know, how that was going to go. At one point, you had Pastor Carl, I think because he was fed up because they kept going around in circles and every time they addressed something, you know, Becca would find a fault. So he ended up saying to Becca, Becca, do you want this marriage or are you done? And I think the producers saw red because they were worried that she's going to say, no, I don't want it anymore. So you had Dr. Pepper step in and sort of say, no, she's too emotional. Let's not get her to make a decision at the moment. Let's just, you know, get her to take a deep breath and then they can take it from there and it's like Austin for me I gave him a lot of grace at the start because I thought it was because he was worried that you know she had had a surgical procedure and he wanted to find out about her medical problems but now it's becoming a bit too much I think it's way past that time at this point he should have known what what her medical conditions were or he should know what her medical conditions are and he should have made a decision of whether or not he wants to stay in this marriage with her or not. If not, let her know and allow her to move on and you move on. You don't need to force something that's not working. So I, I really don't know. I really don't know how they're going to work this out.
I don't get it, but Chloe anyway meets up with her friend um, and they have a conversation, obviously. And it's surprising that the first pers person she meets up with is her friend and not Michael. Anyway, um, she spoke about the fact that she misses Michael and Michael had previously said, you know, he sent her pictures of the dog and of them settling in just to show them how well they're doing. And so the friend then brings up a concern that he's worried that maybe... Michael is acting or he's too good to be real and it's like why does he always say what needs to be said at the right time is he very calculated is he and it's like well the only way you can find out is by living with him and seeing whether his words and his actions align I know the friend was asking whether his actions and his words align and so I don't know. It's going to be up to Chloe. That is she willing to take the risk and spend time with this man and know whether he's actually real or whether he's playing for the up for the cameras. That way, if he's play acting, then, you know, she can keep it moving because some of the other wives are complaining that their husbands, the way they behave on camera is totally different to how they behave off camera. You even had Becca say the same thing that Austin is very sort of, um, open when on camera and is very into deep conversations but once the cameras go away you know he changes into somebody totally different so the more sh the best thing for chloe is to go back home stay with michael see how he behaves when they are not on camera and then she can make a judgment from there after observing him for a while um you have brennan and emily go and ha get her stitches taken out poor emily is such a good sport she's always smiling she will always smile through anything um, and I, I really feel bad for her because I think she's already got problems with her wrist because she injured her wrist, I think at the wedding or at the honeymoon. And now she's got the scar that she'll carry with her for the rest of her life. And reminder of the time she was married to this genius. It's cute to see Emily still smiling after she has the stitches taken out and it's like, poor thing. Um, you then have Becca and Austin. Apparently, they're, they've been able to turn over a new leaf. They're in a happy place. I, if nothing else, appreciate the fact that they had the sort of issues that they had because they were too good to be true. You could tell that something wasn't right, but they were trying to play up for the cameras. So the fact that things got to a loggerhead and they had to call in the experts, that I appreciate. Obviously, they're still talking about intimacy and it's like, can we move on from this intimacy thing? If we're not going to do anything, can we come up with something else? And it's like, is it the producers that are pushing you to continue to talk about it? There's no need for you to be going down this road if this is all you're going to be saying for the next 10 days. If he's not willing to be intimate with you, it's up to you to ask yourself, do you want to proceed in a marriage and say yes on decision day to a man who hasn't done anything to show that he's intimately attracted to you? Or do you want to sort of turn over in your leaf, go and start looking and find yourself your person that will love you and val value you and you know be open to intimacy with you and you don't have to beg on national tv for people to sort of be intimate with you i don't know just see it's just a bit strange you have michael and you have chloe chloe has come back to their apartment and they're getting ready for the family visit so they are having an 80s themed party and i'm now looking at michael sideways since the friend said you know maybe he's a bit too good to be true i always thought he was good i thought he was genuine so i'm going to wait and see what happens it's interesting to watch Brennan try to put his best foot forward because obviously um, you have Emily who's been told she can't do any activity or do anything that is stressful. So he is trying to be on his best behavior and he's trying to get brownie points because, you know, she talks about the plates in the sink and he runs to wash the plates. She talks about the floors. He runs to mop the floors. And it's like, where was this Brennan from day one? And the fact that he says he can now trust her. And it's like, where was this Brennan from day one. Brennan is going to regret the way he sort of overlooked Emily because I think Emily is amazing. I think sadly she was matched with someone who liked her at first sight, but then something happened after the honeymoon or during the honeymoon. The fact that she tried to challenge him, I think is what put him off. And I think he's someone who's used to doing whatever he wants when he wants to. So the idea that someone would come in and sort of question whatever he's doing, I think is the thing that turned him off. So I don't know. It was cute to see them work though. It was cute. And to see Emily sort of try and micromanage him. That was good. Um, 
And then you have Michael and Chloe have their 80s party. So both their friends come. Obviously, Caesar comes. He's, it seems he's one of Chloe's closest friends. And so to see them have a conversation, yes, everybody. Uh, well, Michael's friends were a bit shocked when Chloe said, you know, she had to go home for a couple of days just to de-escalate and then come back. And they, were, I think they were now thinking, why did she have to go home? What is it we're missing? Make it make sense. And then so to have her then confirm that she did come back and since she's been back, things have been going great. And so I think Chloe's friend Caesar was trying to sort of suss out Michael to see if Michael has any cracks to see if he was going to say anything negative or anything pompous. And it's he was able to articulate himself without being disrespectful. And he was actually able to praise his wife, which was good. Um, Michael's friends were telling Chloe that, you know, Michael is someone who's used to de-escalating situations he comes across as a people pleaser so make sure that he's showing you his authentic self and he's not only showing you the side that you need to see so it it seems they're both people pleasers according to chloe so it's going to be interesting to see how they resolve conflict since they're always trying to please people and how they can sort of grow and be their best most authentic selves so we have Chloe and Cameron. <laughs> it seems like they're trying to win people over. They're trying to see who between the two of them can sort of get away with saying something and have everybody on their side. Because you have Claire meet up with her mom. You have Cameron meet up with Brennan of all people. And so they're having these conversations and you have Claire saying, you know, I really liked Cameron. He was an amazing guy. You know, um, he's been going through a lot and he just wants to be on his own he doesn't want me there whereas I'm used to being there for people and it's like well just because you're used to being there for people doesn't want doesn't mean that people want you to be there for them it doesn't mean that and I like the fact that her mother was able to sort of say to her no you can't say you want him you know to have you there if he's not in the place to have you there he doesn't feel like wanting to have you there because it seems the mother when she was going to chemotherapy she felt you know she didn't want people around her she didn't want sort of people sort of I think she just wanted personal space and to be alone and to deal with what she was going through. So she was trying to tell Claire the same. And I think Claire was maybe, I don't know, maybe it's because Claire is not one of my favorites this season. Something about her is a bit off. So I really wasn't a fan and I I, I wasn't buying whatever she was trying to sell. Um, And then you have Cameron, you know, it's, I don't know whether it's anxiety that's exaggerating his symptoms or whether it's just he feels some type of way. Because they were having this conversation with Cameron and then suddenly he started, you know, who, who I'm, I'm, you know, I'm feeling like I'm, I can't breathe. He says he's got atrial flutter. And so I don't know whether that's being exacerbated by um, him being very anxious. I'm going to be honest. I don't know whether anxiety is playing a part in how he's feeling at the moment. Um, and so... Um, it will be interesting to see what they decide on decision day. I think for them, I think this is this, you know, this cow is cooked. They just need to call it for what it is. This relationship won't work. They've tried their best. Sadly, they were not the right person for each other. And that's OK. And they can keep it moving. They don't need to keep trying and they don't need to keep wasting our time coming on camera to sort of have conversations and, you know, um, making Cameron more anxious than he is because he's really going through a lot. I wish the experts had just asked him to sort of opt out and he could have opted out and had time to sort of fully recover or fully address his health problems. They say never judge a book by its cover. And Michael, I think, is one of those people that at times when you see the way he dresses, you start to think, oh, what's going on here? And so for Chloe to go to his boxing class and see him in action, I think was amazing because she got to realize that there's more to this man than what she thinks. Because I think when she saw him wearing a skirt and stuff, it was a bit of a turn off. So to actually see him, you know, stand there and be boxing and, but you know, jumping around and doing whatever he was doing you could see she became a groupie she was turned on and she became a groupie and you could see she was hot and bothered and it was cute to see it was really cute to see and i give her credit for expressing that oh i really am turned on by this you know i didn't realize that there was a different side to michael like this and i think this is the 
problem that most of us have that when we look at someone, we judge them and we put them in a box instead of looking at them as a whole person and seeing everything that comes with them. And so it was cute to see, you know, Chloe get excited. They spoke about Michael being a people pleaser and he was able to express himself and they really seemed to be in a good place. So I have hope for them. I have hope. I All I can do is have hope these days because you never know with couples, they can disappoint you in the next moment. It's beautiful to see the experts actually have a conversation with Emily to catch up and see how she's doing. Yes, Brennan was there, but to have all three experts sort of zoom in and sort of have a conversation and check up on them and see how Emily's doing was amazing. And they tried not to focus on the romantic aspect of their relationship, but they tried to sort of focus on just the human connection between them, you know, the sort of friendship that they have and the fact that they've been through such a traumatic incident and come out on the other side and have stood beside each other and haven't had sort of this bond or this sort of accident break them. That was cute to see. That was nice to see. And it was heartwarming to see that all the experts really wanted to have this conversation with Emily. I think they were waiting until she was out of the woods and she felt a lot better. So that was great to see. Um, Brennan, Brennan can't stand Dr. Pia. I don't know why, whether he's attracted to her or whatever it is about her. Something about her winds him up and he has no respect. When she was talking to him, you could see his face that he wasn't even listening. He was checking out and then he was zoning back in when Pastor Cal or Dr. Pepper was speaking. And it's like, why? I think she's nice. It's sad that he doesn't value her worth, but hey, that's who he is. I think he's still holding on to the fact that she told him that he needs to go to therapy. Hopefully one day someone will take him there, but hey, it is what it is. Um, so it was a great episode. I really enjoyed that. Um, it looks like drama's coming. I don't know when, but anyway, thanks guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and click on the link in my video to watch my review from episode 17. Bye guys.